Southern Cup. My name is Brad Luce. We're going to make a quick walk through the pit area here, talk about some of the boats that are here. If we see a driver or two, we'll get some comments from them. Behind me, however, you see beautiful Lake Guntersville, and we just completed our first of three days this weekend. Tomorrow, we actually begin the day first thing in the morning. We're going to go qualifying, but we had three hours of testing this afternoon. It's a new course. It's a big course. It's a fast course, so we heard. We'll ask the drivers about that, but in looking at the speeds I think it was I turn around here we have our first boat in the pit area it is the U3 the Griggs Ace Hardware Charlie Grigg out of the Tri-Cities in Washington has sponsored this boat down here Jimmy King's going to drive it you've been down here this is your second year young man welcome to Guntersville well thank you glad to be back it's good to have you down here you got out on the water today first impressions of this new race course big very large turns. It reminds me a lot of the big turn at Detroit on both ends, so it should be extremely fast. Um, it'll be an interesting day. I'm of the opinion, correct me, I'm of the opinion maybe that plays into this boat, the big wide corners and keeping the RPMs up. In, in the, the past it has, and so we'll see what tomorrow brings. There you go. So one quick question I'll let you get for the evening. You went out on the race course today. We saw you shut the boat down, turn around, and come back to the pit area. Any problems? No, uh, we were just trying a new combination, and I didn't uh, feel that it was uh, worth playing with anymore, so we brought it in to make a change, and uh, we just ran it out of time. So we'll have it ready for tomorrow morning. You're ready to go first thing. That's us. Jimmy King, driver of the U3 Griggs Ace Hardware. Thanks, my friend. Have a good evening. All right. Jimmy King, now we'll walk through some boats here. Thing is beautiful. All right, we'll see what's next up. We've got an eight boat field. Here's a good one. The U11 Legend Yacht Transport. This boat is owned by Scott and Shannon Rainey out of Cleellum, Washington. For those of you who have no clue as to where that is, it's kind of in the center of the state of Washington. This is not the same boat they ran a year ago. This is a different boat. Jamie Nielsen drove the boat last year. He's also driven this one previously. He's also standing right over here. And I got half a notion this guy's pretty happy. But before we get to some pretty hot laps you laid down, tell me about the new race course. Yeah, I mean, it's completely different than anything we've run in the past. So, uh, you know, it's it's a super speedway out there. Nice, big, wide, sweeping turns. and. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. So it doesn't beat doesn't beat you up in the corner nearly as bad as uh, some of those tight corners and the other courses, but uh, should be interesting. So see which teams can adjust the fastest and find a setup that works out here. And uh, if nothing else, should make for some really close and exciting racing. It certainly should. And I mentioned a moment ago that you've driven this boat before. Is the learning curve pretty steep on this? You're catching up to it quick? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a learning curve, that's for sure. So I don't have nearly as much time in this boat as I had in the other boat. But, uh, you know, I like the ride that we're getting so far, and uh, so far, so good. So keep this uh, U11 Legend Yacht Transport boat, keep keep improving as the weekend goes on, and uh, hopefully we can give those guys a run for their money on a Sunday afternoon. Sounds good to me. I can tell you your owners were happy. They certainly were smiling. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes it uh, all worth it for me. So. Very good. Jamie Nielsen, driver of the U11, the Legend Yacht Transport. From a color blind guy's perspective, one of the prettiest boats in the pit area. Thanks, Jamie. Appreciate it, bud. All right, we'll keep going. We got two up, two down. We'll get to boat number three. Oh, we're going to find the Miss Madison Racing Team up next. We'll start with the U91. This is the Goodman Real Estate. Everybody knows this hull. This is the third winningest hull in the history of H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing. Gone is the black, the predominantly black color scheme on the deck and the cowling, and now what we've got is a lot of gold trimmed in black and white. But the other big change in this particular camp is the return of this one particular driver over here. His name is Andrew Tate. He's also standing right here. Hey, my friend, welcome back to Gunnersville. Uh, it's glad to, good to be here. Thanks for having me. It is good to have you here. So we got a new race course since the last time you were out here. Tell me about it. <laughs> Start clean with the power of Clorox. You now live in a world where you never run out of milk. DoorDash. It's very, very big turns. <laughs> I think that's the, uh, the verdict. But, I mean, you come out of the corner and the boat's already packing air. And it's pretty free. Uh, I think we saw some pretty fast lap speeds today. So we'll see how qualifying goes in the morning. But yeah, I mean, we're still learning, making changes, trying to get better. And 
between the first and second run, we went a little bit faster, which is encouraging, and try and put it all together tomorrow. And that was kind of the question I was going to go to next. You talk about learning and so forth. And you're not only learning to boat, you're learning the team. you got to gel everybody together. You tested this thing in the Tri-Cities. You feeling better with it now? Yeah, I mean, seat time is it's invaluable. The, the more you're in the boat, the more comfortable you become. And uh, hopefully at some point it ends up just kind of feeling like another appendage. I mean, you're another arm, another leg. It becomes a part of you at some point, and uh, that's when you can really go fast. Nobody's ever repeated as a winner on this body of water. You've won here before. You ready to go? Yeah. Uh, hopefully we can make some history here more than one way. So we're going to give it all, our all here. The Miss Goodman, Goodman Real Estate boat is uh, looking good, feeling good, and uh, we're definitely excited. Good for you. Andrew Tate, he drives the U91, the Goodman Real Estate. Have a good weekend, my friend. Thank you. There you go. Andrew Tate, driver of the U91. The other big story in the offseason was the retirement of Jimmy Shane from the seat of the U1, the Miss Home Street. He turns the seat over to Dylan Runney, and he's standing right here. Hey, young man, how are you? How are you doing, Mr. Lewis? Great uh, to see you today. Uh, it's good to be seen. It is definitely good to be seen. I can't ask you about the new race course here because you never ran on the big unlimited course, but this is a big one. It's wide. Those corners are sweeping. What did you think? Yeah, you know, even without being on the old course, you could tell this one's different. It's, uh, it's fast. It's big. Uh, something to get used to and uh, yeah looking forward to it. I think we're gonna see some good speeds tomorrow and uh, excited for the fans you know we love coming down to Gunnersville the people of this town love the sport and uh, we love to give them something special to watch so I think they're gonna see some hot speeds and uh, have a good time this is only the second day that you've been in this particular boat you starting to figure this thing out yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was a good learning day today. Uh, we got some good data to, to make some decisions here. Again, I kind of went into this blind with the, with the new course. So it was good to get the data, but also good for me to go run in some traffic too and, and have some additional boats out there. Uh, it's a different ball game, like I think we knew it was going to be. Uh, so that was fun. That was exciting. And uh, again, it's a learning curve every single day. Yeah, you were running out there with Corey for a while. We enjoyed it on the shore. We had fun with it. Yeah, you know, it was good to, to get side by side with him. You know, they have a great team over at the, the Strong Racing Beacon team and uh, looking forward to racing with them all year. And I think we gave a little taste that, uh, you know, we're all going to be right there together. Have a good weekend. Thanks for hanging around, having a conversation. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thanks, you guys. Bet. Dylan Runney, driver of the Miss Home Street, the U1. He mentioned Strong Racing. We'll find our way over here to the U9. This is another one of the big stories in the off season. The last time we saw this boat running competition, it did not end well in Madison, Indiana on the Ohio River, but the boat has been completely rebuilt. They've done an awful lot to it. Corey Peabody returns to the cockpit of this one. He's standing right here, Mr. Peabody. Hello, my friend. Welcome to Gunnersville. Hey, thanks. Glad to be here. It's kind of nice to be back here. You had a little of that uh, Southern hospitality last night. Oh, yeah. Every night we've had Southern hospitality. I've been actually here for a week, so uh, happy to be here. Great to be back in Gunnersville, and the, the weather's great, so can't wait to get out on the water. I'm asking everybody about the new course. You drove on the old one. You're a defending Guntersville champion. What do you think of the new layout? It's different. It's going to take some time to get used to. you got to fly the boat completely different. Um, some of the buoys are in some weird places, and it's hard to see them for us. And then when we come off the, 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 the exit of one, there's another buoy. It's kind of a weird spot. But, you know, we'll have to get used to it. And we all got to drive around the same buoys. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. We just got to figure it out and uh, keep our foot to the floor. Things come quick. We go qualifying right out of the box tomorrow morning. I know you're ready. Oh yeah, we're ready. We're uh, we're up there. We're, we're we're pretty happy with where the boat is. So we're gonna. It's better outside with a Ninja Woodfire XL Grill and Smoker. Multitask with the Ninja Pro Connect app. Monitor, control, and cook from your phone. Cook two proteins to different levels of doneness at the same time. It's better outside with Ninja. Braden has amazed me. He's so strong. You hear about cancer, but you don't ever think that it will. We're going to leave it the way it is and go out there and run a good lap. Good luck, Corey. Defend your title here on the water. We'll look for you pushing out front. All right. Thank you. There you go. Corey Peabody, driver of the U9, the Beacon Plumbing. The Beacon sponsorship is not only on the nine, it is also on the eight. And that is the bright red boat that's right next door to Corey's U8 Beacon Electric. Got a man standing here wearing a red shirt. I got half a notion you might be the driver. You must drive this boat, is that right? Uh, 
I think so. Yeah. I might. Yeah, I'm the lucky guy this weekend. There you go. J. Michael Kelly with us. You took the boat out on the water. I'm asking everybody the same question. Tell me about the new course. What do you think? Uh, I mean, completely different. I mean, we've never really ran on anything like this and uh, wasn't really too sure how it would work out, you know, coming here. And, um, you know, end of the day, it, it's I, I enjoyed it. It was fast water, um, ran some good lap speeds. Uh, we're, we're just going to have to see how it plays out when it comes time for racing. You guys did so much work on this boat in the off season. You had it at the test session. Now you had it out here today. From my perspective, over there on the pipes, it looked like an incredible boat ride. Oh, I mean, every time we've taken the boat out, it's gotten better. Uh, we got some really smart guys working on this stuff. And we're really lucky to have the Camel Brothers and the rest of the guys that, you know, are here working on these things and uh, just really working hard every every time we go out uh, we come back and we 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 see what we can improve on and um, yeah just our last run I mean it was a night and day difference so um, these guys really know their stuff and making it a lot easier on me as a driver and uh, it's just it's really exciting to see how far the boats come you know since last year and uh, just really excited and the guys should be extremely pleased on the hard work that they've put into this thing. Well, we've got an awfully fast field of boats here. You put some awfully quick times on the ledger today. We'll look for it tomorrow morning in qualifying. Have a good weekend and have a good race, Mike. Yeah, no, thank you. It's good to be back in Gunnersville. Uh, yeah, just really excited for tomorrow. Just It's, it's going to be exciting to see what everybody lays down in qualifying and, you know, just see how uh, the racing goes. I think the group of boats that are here, that's a really good fleet of race boats this year. And uh, it's I think everybody's in for a really big treat. And, um, yeah, just really fast boats, really competitive. Everybody down here ran really good today, and uh, we'll just see how this weekend goes. I was going to let you go, but now i got to ask, tell me about last night. Did you have some fun with those fans? Oh, it was really cool. Um, it was neat how we were all staged there on the, on the street there. Um, I didn't really get a venture down too far down there, um, but we did have a lot of – a lot of young kids coming down, so we got to hand out a lot of hero cards, got a lot of sign a lot of autographs, and uh, just answered a lot of questions and stuff. A lot of people excited about it, and so I think it was a really special thing that I think really paid off, and it was it was good to interact with a lot of the people that are going to be down this week and watching the races. Very very good. Thank you very much. He is J. Michael Kelly. He's going to be driving that one right there, the bright red Beacon Electric. Good luck, my friend. Thank you. All right, J. Michael Kelly. And he's one of those drivers that knows what it takes to win here on Lake Guntersville. So we got two more to go. You come around the corner over here and there's just a whole bunch of Tennessee Orange over here. This is the U40 bucket list race and got Dustin right here. How you doing, my friend? Welcome back to Guntersville. Excellent. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. It's been a while. I think we all are. This is a fun place. Yeah, you know, last time I was here, we had some tough luck with a little boat and uh, I thought, well, I don't know if I'll be back, you know, anytime soon. And then when I got the call to drive this thing, I couldn't wait to get back here. You went out on the race course today and almost immediately you died down in the lower end of the race course. We saw a bunch of smoke. Any problems there? No, it's, uh, it's a combination of a few things. I felt a little vibration. We're being, uh, you know, conservative. We're just being cautious and making sure that we're not hurting anything. And, um, and then this, this uh, fuel control is a little touchy. It's a little sensitive. It's a little grumpy. And uh, so we came back here. Adam looked at it and said, quit being you know, such a sissy. Get out there and, and get this thing going. So he, he tuned it up a little bit, and we still have a, a long way to go. Uh, the boat's crazy fast, and uh, uh, we, looking at our data, we've got more, more for him. So. I saw a lap speed in there in the early 160s. That's got to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was 165, I think was our, our speed, and, and we're pretty happy with that. You know, I, I think uh, looking at, like I said, the, the tune-up on it, Adam had a little smile on his face, and he says, oh, we can do better than that. So I don't mind being, you know, the guy out of sight, out of mind, and uh, we'll let these guys, you know, fight over the, the tents, and we'll go out there and start up miles an hour at a time. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and waiting for us to come down here and have this conversation. Good luck. I know you like it down here. You got a fast race boat. Have a good weekend. Thank you. I really appreciate it. There you go. Dustin Eccles, driver of the U40, the bucket list racing. These guys are a player this weekend. But we'll step over and find a whole lot of more, whole lot of more of Tennessee Orange. How you doing, my friend? Doing great. How are you? Uh, good. We having a good time? We are having a great time. Yeah. You know, I got out and finally got to see what the boat does, and she likes me. 
<laughs> I got to ask, you got to get laps at 130. You're like 129.8. I know. Uh, 129.8, and I think there was another one that was 129, but when I stepped on it, 142 was pretty easy. That was three-quarter throttle, and there's a lot more. I just wanted to shake it down that first lap. The second lap, I probably took it a little too easy, but uh, the third lap, we'll, we'll get there. Don't worry. Gearbox. Everybody come back all happy in the gearbox department? The gearbox's name is Medusa, and Medusa was very happy, uh, did really well. Well, I stepped on it and it just uh, delivered. So it was really good to see that. We've been working on the gearbox for a while. We added what's called a dry sump system, and that means more oil and more water to cool it down, and she performed. So I expect more really good things from Medusa. You know, every time I talk to you, that smile gets just a little bit larger. It does, it does, and I'm learning too. So yeah, I came in a little hot, uh, so I learned that. But I heard. Yes, yes, but at the same time, you know, I think I'm in good company. Others have done it too, but you live and you learn, and then I've got a great team that teases me about it, but then also wants me to get better, so that's good. And you'll be ready to go first thing tomorrow morning, I assume. Oh, you know what, more laps, we got 12 more to do, and we gotta get those over 130, we'll do it. Congratulations, Thanks, my buddy. friend, let's do it, let's get it qualified. That's right, thank you. All right, that's Brent good. Hall, driver of the 440, it is the boy Tano Holmes, he's a rookie, he's gotta get qualified. I'm telling you, right now, he's gonna get it done. So that's pit row for H1 Unlimited. We've got eight boats in the pit area. We've got eight boats that are gonna be ready to go racing. We take to the water at 8 a.m. Central Daylight Time tomorrow morning for qualifying. We'll be covering all of that on the H1 Unlimited YouTube channel. This is Brad Lou signing off from Guntersville. Join us at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. We'll go qualifying, then we go racing. Have a good Make the statement we always make when we get to a boat race and it's time for Heat 1A, this time sponsored by American Dumpster. Jeff, you cannot win the Southern Cup in the first heat of the weekend, but you can certainly lose it. Be careful, finish, and score points. This is the building block. This is the heat you want to score. You want to score well. You don't want to come out of this heat with the goose egg, which is the zero. This is your building block to get points in the first second, first section, second section, third section, to be on the front row of the Southern Cup Championship tomorrow at 5.30, Central Daylight Time here in Guntersville. 3.25 until the start, 3.25. Dustin Eccles cutting across the race course for the back stretch to the front stretch on the GP course. That is a legal maneuver. Jeff, let's talk a little bit about our start procedure here. We've, it's been basically the same as it's been for our previous two classes. It's a clock start. Put your boat on the start finish line when the clock strikes zero. Do not jump that start. You will be penalized and you will not win. But there's an added factor to this whole thing. You cannot drop your boat below 80 miles per hour. So when we get a winner in this heat, the boats have to go through tech inspection, and that's where they pick up that 80 mile an hour violation should it happen. So you can't just go up to the top end of the race course and park your boat at 10 miles an hour. You must stay above 80 miles per hour. The drivers have indication in the cockpit. They also have the radio guys in their ears explaining this to them. Two minutes and 28 seconds to the start. This is what we call the milling period. Got a couple boats at the top end of the race course, one on the back stretch, and Dylan Runney at the bottom end. Runney at the bottom end, as Brad mentioned, the turbinator with Jimmy King just past the halfway mark on the back chute. Two boats up in turn number two, the Tennessee Orange bucket list racing of Dustin Eccles and the dominant red Beacon Electric with J. Michael Kelly. We are coming up on two minutes, two minutes fast. until American Dumpster H1 Unlimited Heat 1A. Brad Luce, the season is about to begin for H1. I like the lineup. Let's get this party started. Let's get it started. Remember, Dylan Runney, the third boat coming down the front straightaway here. He has to start behind the field and on the outside. You see him moving to the outside. 
Jeff, these guys are awfully early to get down to the bottom end of the race course here at a buck 30, which we are at now. So it's a minute 30. This is where the 80 miles per hour comes in the play. If you're down there too early and have to slow down, you run the risk of breaking that 80 mile per hour barrier, and that can cost you dearly. But they'll come up the backstretch. It is Dustin Eccles leading the field up there. Got three boats behind him. Jeff, bring them up to the top end of the course. Coming up on the one minute period for American Dumpster Unlimited 1A. Three, two, one, mark. One minute period in session. H1 Unlimited Heat 1A. Our heat sponsor, American Dumpster, leading the field up. Looks like you'll get lane number one, Dustin Eccles in Bucket List Racing. J. Michael Kelly coming into the two lane in the Beacon Electric. Jimmy King in the Turbinator. Griggs Ace Hardware in three. Dylan Runney to the outside in four in Miss Home Street. We are approaching 30 seconds. Brad Luce, let's start this Southern Cup. Bring him to the green flag. Thank you very much, Jeff. And it looks like J. Michael Kelly's gonna claim lane number one. I think Dustin Eccles is gonna go in two. I think the Terminator's gonna go in three. And then on the far outside and behind, as he is supposed to, is gonna be Dylan running. But as we saw, the boats were down there too early. And Dustin Eccles is crawling up to the start finish line here in the 40. We're inside 10 seconds until our start. We are on five seconds. We are four, three, Two, one, mark, and we are racing in Heat 1A, presented by American Dumpster. I think we've got the 40 bucket list racing definitely across the start finish line early, but until we get it legal, we will call them as they are on the water. Eccles is going to get out of the corner for a check deck. It is J. Michael Kelly on the inside. He's got a lot of boats with him. He's got the Terminator. You can hear him on the outside. There is Eccles. He pulls up alongside J. Michael Kelly, and now Booth moves out by about a boat length, maybe a boat length and a half. He may have jumped Jeff, but man, he's moving. Start is under review. Eccles in front. He could be the culprit. Eccles in front. Kelly is there. The Terminator in third into turn number two. Exciting dueling to begin today, but is Eccles legal? We'll call them as they are on the water until we hear it officially. Kelly with the inside lane position. Look at him right on the buoy roll. Now it's Eccles on the outside. Whether he jumped or not, two of the fastest race boats in the world are tied together as they come across our finish line. Jeff, I think you've got an update. We got a one lap penalty on your physical leader, Dustin Eccles, in the bucket list racing. The Tennessee Orange down a lap for a gun jump. So your leader is the dominant red boat in turn number one, J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. That moves the Turbinator, the turbocharged Allison up to second, Griggs Ace Hardware, Miss Home Street in third, Eccles physically in front, but in fourth. Yeah, he's in fourth place, so your leader is J. Michael Kelly, the red boat up the back stretch. That is the Beacon Electric. And if we have that information, so does J. Michael Kelly. That's why you see him letting the orange boat go. Let him go. That's not who he's racing against. However, in his right side rear view mirror, as Jeff calls it, the Terminator, the U3, the great ace hardware, he is trying to make a move. Coming up on the outside of J. Michael Kelly. Justin Eccles will come down. He will be our leader on the water, but he is actually running it forward. But Jimmy King is making a move, Jeff. Brad with Eccles getting that one lap penalty. He has come toward the inside, and Kelly's had to go outside. He's wake, your official leader. Here comes the turbocharged Allison charging on the outside. This one is not over. American Dumpster, Unlimited 1A. It's the two top dominant red boats. Kelly, your leader, Brad the Terminator is right there. Yeah, he's right there. The race is for second place, except that is a race for first place. The two red boats, Kelly on the inside, King on the outside. You can't see King driving a three, the Griggs Ace Hardware, but he's right with him. This one is going to be close. It's going to be a charge to the finish line. Kelly with the lane position, but it is Jimmy King on the outside with an awful lot of boat speed. He's going to pack as much as he can into this corner. Now you see Dustin Eccles go way wide and give our leaders room to come down and race this out. There is Kelly. There is King. I think J. Michael Kelly will be able to hold him off. Dustin Eckle comes across, but on his inside, our winner of Heat 1A on the water, J. Michael Kelly driving the Beacon Electric. Second place to Jimmy King in the Griggs Presents Miss Ace Hardware. Holy smoke. Our third place boat will be the rookie, Dylan Runney, driving the Miss Home Street. And I can only think Jeff Ayler Justin Eccles is just kicking himself in that cockpit. We said, don't make a mistake, get your points in that first heat. 
He we, made a mistake. We talked about it yesterday. We talked about it this morning. The first tee of the weekend, that's your building block, your top qualifier, the first error of racing activity this weekend. Dustin Eccles running that extra lap, and he does have to finish to get those 169 points. Great run by J. Michael Kelly, but Brad the Turbinator, Griggs presents Miss Ace Hardware, the World War II Allison aircraft engine. Look great with that turbocharger running in second. That's fun. Gas them up. Let's do it again. That was an awful lot of fun. Here comes Dustin Eccles. He's disappointed, but he comes across still very important. He comes across, he finishes, he will pick up his 169 points. They all build, as you said, with the building blocks toward making it into the final. The two boats who make out like a bandit because of Dustin Eccles' air, the Q3, the Griggs presents Miss Ace Hardware with Jimmy King. They pick up second place points, that's 300. And how about Dylan Runney? Has to start behind the field, so he's handicapped to begin with, but because of the matters out front, he picks up a third place and 225 points. We are here, and we've got one, two, three rooster tails headed our way. The fans might be thinking, Jeff, wait a minute, there's eight boats in the pit area. We ran four in the first one. Where's our fourth boat in this one? Brent Hall in the 440 has not yet qualified as a driver, so he is not eligible yet to come out and run with these guys. But we've got three on the water. It's going to be the U11, the Legend Yacht Transport. Legend Yacht Transport driven by Jamie Nielsen. He will come across the start finish line. Boat running very, very good this weekend. He's going to be joined on the race course by the U9 Beacon Plumbing with Corey Peabody. Here comes Corey. That white boat, Corey Peabody, he's going to be quick in this one. But don't ever count out Andrew Tate. Jeff, before you make a comment, want to just remind our fans, please stay out of the water when our H1 hydroplanes and all hydroplanes are on the water and racing. So we need you out of the water right now. Parents, help us out just a little bit there if your kids are in there enjoying some, some cool water. Jeff, three minutes and 50 seconds to the start. We got a three-boat heat, but it should be a good one. I'm sure these drivers watched the warm-up period back in American Dumpster Unlimited Heat 1A. Dustin Eccles, our top qualifier, was a gun jumper, received a one-lap penalty, fourth-place finish. Brad, these three drivers right now with the three-boat heat, you definitely don't want to jump the gun, but you want to maintain your boat, run a clean race, score where you can, but the main thing is to stay clean, don't get in trouble. Yeah, and here's some of that start procedure right now. You're watching Jamie Nielsen come down the front straightaway very, very slowly here, and we saw some of the drivers have an issue with the 80 mile an hour rule and being a little bit too early on their start procedure in our Heat 1A earlier today. And it cost, unfortunately, our U40 bucket list racing at Dustin Eccles. It cost him a potential first place finish in his heat. But right now it is Heat 1B presented by American Dumpster. We're two minutes and 50 seconds away from the start. Jamie Nielsen right now is sitting on an inside lane. Where is Andrew. Oh, Andrew's uh, halfway up the back stretch. He's been going very slowly ever since he came out. All a part of his start procedure, Jeff. I think Andrew Tate right now, probably Brad, could be a little bit off. We'll see if he cuts through that infield there. That is a legal maneuver at that part of the race course. But no, he will go on up to turn number two. Now, Nielsen and Peabody are both keen on one another as we now are two minutes and 15 seconds until the start. Brad, the past two seasons, Jamie Nielsen in the Royal Blue Chartreuse boat has a knack at getting lane number one. Can he do it here in American Dumpster 1B? Well, right now where Andrew Tate sets, you know I have this unofficial timing mark that, yeah, you don't really want to be at the start finish line in two minutes. Well, it's a minute 55 right now. And Andrew is right here at the line. He's actually not there yet. And he's going to get there about a minute 48. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. You mentioned Jamie Nielsen and Corey Peabody were playing kind of a game up the back stretch. Well, Corey said he'd had enough of that game. He gave it a little squirt. He moved away from Jamie Nielsen. 130, 130 until the start, Jeff Ayler. With that maneuver, now Nielsen is toward the back of the pack, and all three H1 Unlimited hydroplanes will have to go through turn number one, get their lane assigned on the back straightaway, and the race before the race, we now are one minute and 15 seconds until the start. 
Tate is the first one off the corner. Will he have the best shot at lane number one? Peabody's tracking him. Brad still wants to decide. We're coming up on one minute. Three, two, one, mark. One minute period has begun for American Dumpster. Unlimited 1B. And right now it is Andrew Tate in the 91, the Goodman Real Estate. He is sitting on lane number one. It is Corey Peabody in the Beacon Plumbing, the white U9. That's the second boat going up the backstretch. He is in lane number two. Jamie Nielsen will be on the outside in the Legend Yacht Transport. Inside 40 seconds to the start. Jeff Ayler set the lanes. Get him through that upper corner for me, please. Coming up on the 32nd mark, Andrew Tate will be in lane number one. Goodman Real Estate, gold and white. White craft, white boat with the blue lettering, beacon plumbing with Corey Peabody, and back of the pack is Nielsen. Now is Nielsen sneaking into one? Brad, bring him into the line for American Dumpster 1B. Yeah, let's keep an eye on Nielsen. No, he's going to go to the outside, but he may be the one boat with a lot of boat speed. The others are up there a little bit early. Nielsen was behind the field, but he's got a lot of boat speed on the outside. Inside five seconds for four, three, two, one. Mark, and boy, I like that start. It looked good from here, but Jamie Nielsen nailed it in the U11 Legend Yacht Transport, but all three of them were tied together as they go down to the lower corner. On the inside is Andrew Tate with the lead, the U91 Goodman Real Estate, but it looks like one boat down there, but it is three, and there's Corey. Corey on the outside by a boat length. Tate and Corey Peabody, Jeff, they are really duking it out. The start was good. Now Peabody extends his lead by a boat length and a half. But Tate has the advantage to the inside. Shorter way around. Peabody gets there first. Here comes Tate, and they are now side by side the apex of turn two. Coming off the top end of the race course. Remember, fans, we go three times around. Watch the corner for Andrew Tate right on the buoy row of beauty. But Corey gave him enough room and was able to keep the speed up. This boat's been fast yesterday and today. That boat being the U9. Beacon plumbing with Corey Peabody, your defending Lake Guntersville champion, running like a rocket, got a lot of speed off to his left, and a lot of good driving skill in there too with Andrew Tate. Andrew's not going to give up on this yet. Look at that lane position, pulled him up to about three boat lengths. This is a good one. We are just about halfway through this heat. Corey Peabody's opened up about a four boat length lead, but I'll tell you what, in that left side rear view near Jeff Ayler, Andrew Tate does not want to go away. Right now, Peabody extending the lead in American Dumpster Unlimited 1B here at the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest. Make it a 10 boat length advantage. Peabody in front, leaving Tate a lane in there in lane number one. Nielsen remains in third in Legend Yacht Transport, but Brad Tate's got it down now to eight boat lengths. Corey tightened it up on the pins on the outside. Yes, Corey really did tighten it up up there. He's going to make it as difficult as he can legally on Andrew Tate. And now they come down to pick up the white flag with one to go here in our Heat 1B presented by American Dumpster. It is Corey Peabody and Andrew Tate slamming into the lower end of the race court. Tate gobbles it back up again, back by about six, maybe seven boat lengths. This is the checkered flag lap. Off the exit pit of the corner, Corey Peabody running a beautiful race in that beacon plumbing. He's opened up almost a full rooster tail, but Tate's still knocking on the door, Jeff. The key for Peabody right now. Comfortable lead, don't make a mistake in turn number two. Run his craft clean away from the pins. We go above in turn number two with our drone. Peabody driving clean. Tate running out of time. Brad, bring him to the checkered flag in American Dumpster 1B. It is on the outside. Corey Peabody driving the U9, the Beacon Plumbing for Daryl and Vanessa Strong. Checkered flag flies. Corey Peabody picking up a heat victory in our Heat 1B presented by American Dumpster. It is Andrew Tate coming home in second place driving the Goodman Real Estate and a very strong and good run for the U11. Legend Yacht Transport, Jeff Ayler. The last time we saw Corey Peabody in that U9, it was in the final heat in Madison, Indiana. That's the first heat they've run since. He's out front with 400 points, assuming they get through tech inspection. The whole team will be absolutely tickled with that heat win here at the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest and American Dumpster, Unlimited 1B. The five-minute period has come and gone. 
Let's get this started. Let's get this party started. It is day three of three. The green flag is on the race course. Our four boats are at the top end. J. Michael Kelly comes into our Heat 2A, presented by the Guntersville Water Board with 450 points. The boat is extremely quick. What we've noticed about J. Michael Kelly's bright red boat is how smooth it is on the water. He's followed by teammate Corey Peabody in the Beacon Plumbing. Beacon Electric is the red one. Beacon Plumbing is the white one. And here's your top qualifier. Bucket list racing with Dustin Eccles had that 171 mile per hour lap. All three of those guys went around the race course smartly. And as he loves to do, he likes to do things a little differently. Andrew Tate just tooling around the top end of the race course. Tate's got a place he wants to be on this race course at a certain time. And He'll find a way to get there. Boy, right now, Brad, at that four-minute mark, I think he'll have to come down to turn number one and obviously go down the back straightaway. Will he elect to cut in where J. Michael Kelly is, or will he go back to turn two? Well, we'll see. He's got to go all the way down now. And Kelly and Peabody both cut the race course. That's a legal maneuver. Now, to our new race fans here, Jeff Ayler, if you haven't seen this before, everything is done on a clock start. We are at the start finish line. We're three minutes and 30 seconds until the start. The idea is to put your boat on the starting line at full song, the tick before the clock strikes zero. If you jump the start and are across the line before the clock strikes zero, you run an extra lap. You're not going to win. We go three laps in these preliminary heats. We got a five lap final coming up later on in the day. But right now, with 310, they're in what we call the milling period, Jeff. Brad, I spoke to an H1 Unlimited pilot this morning. I won't name who it was because I don't want to give away their secrets, but I'll give it away anyway. 22 second mark, the entrance pin of turn number two on the back chute. They're looking at about that 10 second mark off the exit pin of turn number two of the start finish line. If you jump the gun in H1 Unlimited hydroplane racing, that is a one lap penalty that takes you away from the checkered flag and those precious points up toward the top. Yeah, this is going to be interesting now because as the boats come out of the pit area, their lane is not assigned to them. They fight for lanes, and at 2.30 before the start, they're going to have to go all the way up to the top end, which means they're going to go all the way around the race course. Andrew Tate has parked himself right now in lane one. Could that change? Yes, it could. Honestly, Jeff, I'm not sure it's going to. I think they've got to go all the way around, and Tate's just going to hang in lane one if he wants it. Right now, Kelly's in two, Peabody's in three. That's going to put our top qualifier on the far outside. And remember, Dustin Eccles needs some points. He jumped his start in the first heat, and although he was the first boat across the finish line, he was relegated to fourth place with the one-lap penalty. So here comes Tate down across start-finish line inside of two minutes. Tate's in one, Kelly's in two, Peabody in three, Eccles is gonna come down behind everybody. Right now, Brad, by the alignment, I like where Eccles is, but the problem where he is, he's on the outside. Yeah, I'm a little worried about Andrew. You know my unofficial timing marks. I always say, yeah, you don't wanna be down there at that entrance pin in the lower corner at 130. It's 130 right now. Yeah, I think Andrew Tate, no doubt, early. It looks like he will cruise around the course. You have to be above 80 miles per hour in the warm-up period prior to the start. So Andrew Tate in turn number one, leisurely working the buoy row in the Goodman Real Estate. He is followed by J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing, then Corey Peabody back behind Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing. Now here comes Dustin Eccles up on the outside in the Tennessee Orange Bucket List Racing. We are now coming up on 55 seconds until the start. Brad, by my view, I think Tate's early Eccles could be the best of all, but he is on the outside. He is on the outside. He's just on the outside of Corey Peabody. 45 seconds until the start. The white flag is up. We're going to go three times around. There's 400 points laying on the table. You need to earn points, 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 as we like to say in these preliminary heats, to find your way into the final. Tate's going to take him up to the top end of the race course with 30 seconds until the start. Followed in lane number two by J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. Then it is his teammate, Corey Peabody. He's in lane three. Eccles is going to be on the outside. You see Dustin starting to wind it up on the outside. You said 12 seconds off the exit pin. Let's take a look. But we are 12 seconds right now. It's going to be getting pretty close to time to put the foot down. You see Tate can't get into it yet. The others can. But now Andrew does. We are three seconds, two seconds, one. Mark, boy, from my 
my view, it looks like it's a legal start, but we'll get it from the official. Andrew Tate on the inside was the first boat across the line. He broke the clock and looking down to turn number one first. And he's got the lead as he goes through the lower corner. Andrew Tate, but boy, has he got company. He's got Kelly, he's got Peabody, and he's got Eccles. But off the corner, it is Andrew Tate. And then look on the outside. It's a legal start. It's a legal start, Jeff. Look at Corey Peabody on the outside in two. Tate made a dynamite start in lane number one, leads it in turn number two. Corey Peabody is hauling the mail in second in Beacon Plumbing. Back in third, we got side-by-side -side action between Kelly and Eccles, but off the corner, it'll be Tate in front, but Peabody charging hard in second. Tight off the buoy row is Andrew Tate. He'll come down and put one of the books, but his right side rearview mirror is full of Corey Peabody. Peabody's closed the distance. He's back by about three belt lengths as they finish lap number one and go down to the lower end of the race course. It's lap number two of three. Tate on the inside with the lead, but he's got Corey right with him. Peabody back about three belt lengths. They're gonna come off the corner very close, Jeff. Peabody's making a charge. Excellent dueling here in Guntersville. Waterboard Unlimited. Heat 2A. We see Tate. Peabody hidden in the rooster tail on the back straightaway. Your race is for first in 2A. Tate maintains that lead. They enter turn number two. Peabody is there. Tate is there. Now they are side by side in turn number two at the apex. Now you know I love to say this, Jeff, but this is as good as it gets in H1 Unlimited Racing. You've hooked up two boats side by side. There's Tate. There's Peabody. They're going to come down to pick up a white flag with one to go, and they're virtually going to be dead even. Corey Peabody and Andrew Tate. Tate by a boat length at the end of two. Third place is going to go to Dustin Eccles in the bucket list racing. J. Michael Kelly trails in fourth down to the lower end of the race court. This is the final lap. You've got to get the checkered flag this time for those 400 points. Looks like one boat coming off the corner. There are two of them right there looking for Corey, and there he is. Sticks his nose out about a boat lake, Jeff. Beautiful dueling here in Guntersville. Waterboard Unlimited 2A. Peabody in front by a boat link. Tate flies the Goodman Real Estate. The battle is up in the front. Tate has the advantage on the inside, shorter way around. They are side by side again at the apex. Final turn, final lap of 2A. Here at 400 points, laying right here at the finish line. Has Peabody got enough? Has Tate got acceleration? They're gonna come down and pick up the checkers, and it's gonna be Corey Peabody in the Beacon Plumbing. He will come home first. Andrew Tate Goodman Real Estate will come home in second place. Bucket list racing with Dustin Eccles in third, and J. Michael Kelly will come home in fourth place. Now that's a good way to start today, Mr. Ayler. Brad Luce, great dueling here in Guntersville Waterboard, Unlimited Heat 2A. While you were calling the boats in turn number one, the drone shot up above entering turn number one on lap number one. There was enough lanes there, but J. Michael Kelly was back at the start, and when he went into turn number two, turn number one and lane number two, he was getting in a little bit of the wash of the Goodman Real Estate to his inside, but Andrew had enough boat lengths. That's some of the reasons, I think, why J. Michael Kelly fell back to the fourth position. Five minutes, five minutes to the start of our Heat 2B, presented by the Guntersville Water Board. First boat away from the pit area is the U11, the Legend Yacht Transport. Go back now. Chartreuse and Royal Blue, trimmed with red. This one's really pretty. I like this one, Jeff Ayler. And the colorblind guy doesn't have any problems seeing this one. Jamie Nielsen behind the wheel of this one, as you mentioned earlier, has yet to win an unlimited race. His owner, Scott and Shannon Rainey, have not either as owners. Scott Rainey has won many a boat race as a crew chief. He knows his way around an unlimited hydroplane. This is a different boat than they ran a year ago, but the boats really responded. It's running very, very well. They could be a real player in this heat. They're gonna be joined by the powder blue and white that you won the Miss Home Street. It is at the top end of the race course. And I hear something, Jeff. I hear a rumble up at the back stretch. It's bright red. It is turbo Allison powered. It is the Griggs Ace Hardware Jimmy King. Dylan Runney, the rookie, comes off the top end in the Miss Home Street. Jimmy King behind him in the piston powered boat. We could have all kinds of conversations on this one. I think it's going to be really interesting. Obviously, Nielsen and King will be battling for lane number one. Runny will be to the outside and back. 
How far will he be back? How good a start will King or Nielsen make in lanes one or two? Their objective, get to the line, don't jump the gun. You're either gonna get 400 or 300. If they get 225, they'll take it. But right now, Nielsen and King in a good spot to get either 400 or 300 points here in Guntersville Waterboard, unlimited 2B. But could Runny come from the back and spoil on the outside? He does have the equipment to do it. He definitely has the equipment to, to do it. One of the big questions is going to be, does he have enough time? He's only got three laps to do it. That's a pretty short period of time. It's a sprint. Come final heat time, there'll be five laps. But we're three in the prelims and across the start-finish line at 245, Dylan Runny. Driving our defending National High Points champion that he won the Miss Home Street, owned by Miss Madison Incorporated and Madison, Indiana. 235 till the start, Jeff. And Brad, different sequences here for all three drivers. King off turn number two, Nielsen past the halfway mark up the back chute, running in turn number one. So lots of separation here in the warm up period. We're two minutes and 20 seconds until the start. And Brad, in about one minute, we expect these three to bunch up. Who will get lane one? Who will get lane two? We know Ronnie will be back on the outside. The factor in this one and the equation is King or Nielsen, who will be in lane one? Uh, boy, under different circumstances, if Ronnie was not a rookie, we might see him cut the race course right here, but he's not going to, I don't think. He may just from, now he's gonna go all the way up. But Nielsen, I think you've gotta like where Jamie Nielsen is sitting right now at 145. He is coming down the front straightaway. Again, the other piece to that start procedure that gets picked up in tech inspection is the 80 mile per hour rule. They have to maintain a minimum speed of 80 miles per hour. So at 1.30, I like a lot where Jamie Nielsen sits right now. I think he can park that thing in lane one. Here comes King, he's gonna come rolling down and he's probably gonna slot himself into lane number two. And as you said, the rookie running Got to be on the outside. 115, Jeff. Nielsen in turn number one. King is powering up into the entrance pin of turn number one. We mentioned Ronnie will be back into the outside. We are five, four, three, two, one, mark. One minute period has begun for Guntersville Waterboard. H1 Unlimited 2B. Nielsen up there in front on the back shoot in the warm up period, followed by King and Dylan Ronnie. Brad loose, 45 seconds until the start. I think it'll be Nielsen in one, King in two, running and back on the outside. Bring him to the green flag. That's what it's gonna be. And it looks like Jamie Nielsen is way out front. He is. Is he early? Maybe a little bit, but I don't think so. I think he's in pretty good shape, but watch the red boat and watch the blue boat behind. I think they're both gonna bring a lot of speed, but remember the blue one's gotta start behind it. Here comes King. You can hear the piston power start to roll. The driver I mentioned this morning unnamed, it was King. He was there at 22. He might be right on it. This could be good. Jeff said he's got some inside scoop on Jimmy King in the piston boat. He's gonna bring a lot of speed on the outside. We're inside 10, we're inside five, we're three, two, one, mark. Certainly appears to be a clean start. It is legal. And the boats were actually late behind the line, but there was a lot of speed in the piston boat. Jimmy King, but he's a couple of ticks behind Jamie Nielsen. Nielsen's got to get down to the lower corner first. Look on the outside. There's a lot of red out there and a lot of rumbling going on with the piston boat. This is going to be good, Jeff, but off the corner, it is Jamie Nielsen. Legend got transport by about four boat lengths. Nielsen, your leader, has the advantage with lane number one, but I think the horsepower advantage belongs to the Terminator. Nielsen's lead is down to five boat lengths. They enter turn number two, and King has got it down to two boat lengths. Nielsen, your leader. King has cut it down to three boat lengths at the apex of turn two. Top end of the race course. We'll wait to see Jimmy King. Where is he? There he is. He pokes his nose out. He stands right on the hip of Nielsen, and he kept the RPM up. Got to come down and put one in the book. Side by side, racing him. One in the books, and it's Nielsen by half a boat length. 
literally half a boat length at the completion of lap number one. Ruddy comes across in third. Was King able to gobble him up? He was, but now he's going to give it back because of the lane position. Looks like one boat down there. There are two. Jamie Nielsen approaches the exit pit, and there's King on the outside. I think you said it right, Jeff. King's got that horsepower, and he's got it wound up. Super sweet action at Guntersville Waterboard Unlimited 2B. King showing the horsepower of the turbocharged Allison, but he is on the outside of Nielsen. Nielsen maintains that advantage. Closer to the buoys, the Turbinator in front, making three boat lengths. Nielsen cantering back as they work through turn number two. Nielsen tighten it up. King's lead down to a boat length. Coming off the top end of the race course, they're going to come down and pick up the white flag. It means one more to go. Jimmy King driving the great Ace Hardware and driving the daylights out of the piston boat. The fans are eating it up, Jeff. Down to the lower end of the race course, King's got about four boat lengths, and Dylan Running comes across in third. Now it's a checkered flag lap. Who we got down there? King by about two boat lengths, maybe three, opening it up just a little bit. He's got that horsepower wound up. He's got to have the acceleration off the corner. So far, he's been able to show Jamie Nielsen the tail end of that red boat. He's got him wound up, Jeff. And now King extends the lead, make it seven boat lengths. Final lap in Guntersville Waterboard, unlimited 2B. The Turbinator looking for 400 big points in this heat. And now Nielsen dropping back. King's lead getting bigger. Final turn, final lap. Can the Turbinator hang on? Drives him definitely clean off the top end, giving Nielsen plenty of room. Jimmy King brings Ace Hardware. Charlie Craig, you're going to pick up 400 big points there. Piston Power claims Heat 2B, presented by the Guntersville Water Board. The fans like that one. Here comes the home street. And Dylan Ruddy, he will come home in third. Jeff Aller, we wondered who would get lane one. Jamie Nielsen did an outstanding job of picking up that inside lane. But at the end of the day, he just couldn't hold off that Terminator. Once he got that thing wound up and the RPMs up high, he could stay wide. It's this big, wide race course. He could keep it up. He didn't have to worry about acceleration because he was bringing a lot of speed to the exit buoy. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. That was fun. And it was set up Dylan Runny, the rookie obviously starting in the back, but we've mentioned before the heat, throughout the heat, Spotter here on the shoreline is Donnie Allen, very capable 350 shoe. Donnie, he's watching the clock and spotting for Dylan. Right now they're fifth in points, and if you're the Miss Home Street camp, you're the defending national championship boat, I think you might want to be a little aggressive here. You want to score high, you want to score well. Yeah, you certainly do. But then at the other end of the spectrum, you want to temper that a little bit. Got to bring it back in one piece. We've seen some boats with cracks in them. We've seen a little bit of damage. The uh, crew chief and the, as we used to say back in the day, some of the wood butchers have been busy on some of these boats, fixing some damage that boats have endured out here. Andrew Tate just painted the exit pin up there. He came around slowly, as he did last time, Jeff, if you will remember. He drove very slowly around the race course and then positioned himself very well for an inside lane. Top end of the race course is the bright red. You ate the Beacon Electric with J. Michael Kelly. And our boats, not sure they could be spread apart any further from each other on the race course right now. You're reading my mind once again. Remember, we had that on our last heat, 2B. Same scenario right here early on in the warm-up period in Allen Land Surveying. Unlimited, 3A, 315 until the start. Kelly by the start finish line booing the dominant red Beacon Electric. Dylan Runney cut through the infield in the home street blue and white. Miss Home Street, Runney by the start finish line buoy. Tate just exiting turn number one in the white, gold, and black. 
Goodman Real Estate, 255 until the start. Brad, still lots to decide. There's still lots to decide, reminding our fans who may be new again, when the boats leave the pit area and come onto the race course, they do not have an assigned lane. This is the milling period. As my friend Jeff Ayler likes to say, this is the race before the race. You slice and dice, if you will, for lack of a better term, and you earn your lane based on timing. We've already seen the 80 mile an hour rule come into play. You cannot drop below 80 miles per hour. You will be disqualified and receive no points. You've got to keep it up above 80 miles an hour, and then you've got to find the lane you want. Hopefully you have plenty of water to play with. You're on time on the line when the clock strikes zero with full boat speed. It's all about the start. Now with two seconds mark, two minutes, two minutes to the start. Well, I think I can see how this one's gonna lay out, Jeff Ayler. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of mystery here. I think we're still gonna have Dylan Runney to the far outside as he is at the top end of the race course behind our other two boats, but this time he doesn't have to trail the field. Exactly, Brad. Runny can come up. Now you do have to have your lane established, correct, prior to the entrance pin at turn number two. That's where whatever lane, that's a very good call. At the entrance pin to the upper corner, that is the lane you must start in. Whatever lane you're in when you get there, that's where you have to start. So we still could have the leapfrog activity, but I don't think we're gonna see that here. Water conditions have laid down, lumpy, a little soupy, but it's manageable. So Andrew Tate right now, Brad, looks like he'll position himself in lane one in Goodman Real Estate. We are three, two, one. Mark, one minute period has begun for Allen Land Surveying, H1 Unlimited 3A. J. Michael Kelly will slide into two lane in the dominant red U8 Beacon Plumbing. Dylan Runney will go to the outside in the Home Street Blue and White Miss Home Street. We're coming up on the 42nd mark. Brad Luce, take him up to turn number two. Bring him to the green flag for Allen Land Surveying, Heat 3A. Home Street, Goodman Real Estate, Beacon Electric, top end of the race course, inside 30 seconds. Tate in one, Kelly in two, Dylan Runney on the outside. Goodman Real Estate's in one, Beacon Electric in two on the outside with boat speed is Dylan Runney. You said it's about a 12 second run off the top of the corner. Boy, they're gonna be tight. Kelly's got room in there. They come off the corner at about 10 seconds. Here comes the run. We are inside five, four, Three, two, one, Mark, boy, by my watch, Jeff, they were all a tad early, but we'll call them the way they are on the water. I don't think there's much question that money was involved. The start is under review, so we'll call them as they are, and the way they are right now is Andrew Tate in the U91, the Goodman Real Estate. He comes off the exit pit with the lead. You can't see the other two boats, but you can sure see those booster tails on the outside. Somewhere out there is J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. Somewhere on the outside is the U1. Dylan Runny in the Miss Home Street. But it's about a four-boat length lead for Andrew Tate to Goodman Real Estate, Jeff. All three jump the gun according to H1 Unlimited. Andrew Tate, your leader. Make it a three-boat length advantage over the Beacon Electric. Dylan Runny falling back in third in Home Street. Brad off the corner. There's Tate. There's Kelly. Holy cow, Andrew Tate on the inside. He's got Kelly driving right in his right side rear view mirror because of the fact everybody jumped the gun. This has become a four boat heat. They just put one in the book. There is still three more laps to go. It's a four lap heat because everybody jumped down to the lower end. It is Andrew Tate still trying to hold up J. Michael Kelly. Dylan Ruddy has fallen back a little bit in the home street. This is gonna come down to a Tate Kelly showdown. They are a lap and a half in as they're up the backstretch. Kelly's still knocking on the door, Jeff. So some drama here in Allen Land surveying. Unlimited 3A with all three boats jumping the gun. All three will have to run one extra lap, as Brad Luce said. Into turn number two, Andrew Tate, your leader, make it a seven boat length advantage over J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. Dylan Runny, though, looks like he's trying to go to the buoy row in third in the home street. 
Brad off the turn, it's Tate. Now he extends it, making eight boat lengths. Yeah, he actually gained on lap number two, and they're gonna come down and put two in the book. And Tate has now opened up water on J. Michael Kelly. He's got about six boat lengths, but Kelly's still knocking on the door. Ronnie has moved to the inside, but he's back about two and a half, maybe three rooster tails. He's not a factor right now, although having moved to the inside lane, Kelly not gonna go away on the outside. Staying at Andrew Tate's right side rear view mirror. He closed a little bit coming off of the corner, Jeff. We're just right now at the halfway mark with the gun jumps of all three boats in Allen Land surveying. Unlimited 3A, Andrew Tate maintains that eight boat length advantage. The top two entering turn number two. Tate gets there first. Driving clean on the inside, but boy, Kelly trying everything he can to close the deficit. They work around the turn. There is Tate. Where is Kelly? There he is. Boy, it looks just like it did the last time. They're going to come down and put another one in the book. Tate still got him seven, eight boat legs on Kelly, but Kelly's not going away. What is getting my attention right now, Jeff Ayler, is the boat ride out of the U91, the Goodman Real Estate. He hasn't had boat ride like that all weekend long, and he's got the power. Now he's got the boat ride to use it. Kelly hit some rough water down there. You saw the boat bounce, and now Andrew Tate has opened up almost a full rooster tail on J. Michael Kelly. One half lap left in Allen Land surveying. Unlimited Heat 3A. Now the deficit for Andrew Tate getting more comfortable, but still work to do. Tate, your leader. Kelly still chases in second, but right now we're at the point. Kelly might pull. Let Tate go get those 400. Dylan Runney remains in third in Miss Home Street. Final turn, final lap. Andrew Tate, Goodman Real Estate in front off the top end of the race course. If he can just finish this last piece of straightaway and he's gonna be able to do it, Andrew Tate, U91, Goodman Real Estate is gonna pick up 400 points on the water. J. Michael Kelly gave it a valiant effort but could not run down the 91 Goodman Real Estate. Here comes Dylan Runney, third place finish for our defending national high points champion, the U1, the Miss Home Street. Oh my goodness, there was boat riding at 91 like we haven't seen, at least I haven't seen so far this weekend. He did not have a boat ride like that in the Tri-Cities at the test session. This water was rougher. He was solid as a rock. And we always say it, Jeff, you can have all the power in the world, but if you don't have boat ride and can't use it, you just have all the power in the world. That first heat of the weekend in H1 Unlimited, that's the most important heat. That's your building block to get your point total going. Dustin Eccles is behind the eight ball. Can he get to the other side of the eight ball here? Maybe get a win, get to the front row of the Southern Cup Championship. Three boats are away from the pit area. Two Three drones are away from the start finish line. They took out of here in formation. The drones are going up. Coming off the top end of the race course with four minutes and 30 seconds until the start. Corey Peabody driving the nine. The beacon plumbing, all white, trimmed in that metallic blue. It's a pretty hydroplane, and man, has Corey been able to make that thing go. The oldest boat on the H1 Unlimited circuit. Here's the guy who needs points and needs them badly. Dustin Eccles, bucket list racing. Jeff, I do not want to say what I'm about to say. These water conditions look pretty good right now. Let, let's run this thing. The water looks good. Let's go. We're back to where we were at 830 this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Mother Nature, you're doing well. Three minutes and 35 seconds to the start. Our boats are spread across the back stretch. Top end of the race course, Corey Peabody and the Beacon Plumbing. All white, trimmed in metallic blue. Oh, and look at this. Here comes a move across the inside. And, oh, this is going to get a little bit close. No, it's not. No, it's not. Dustin says, I didn't get over here quick enough. He's going to have to move to the outside. I suspect there he goes. I think he wanted to get in front of Corey and maybe get on the inside of him, but he was too late coming across, Jeff. Remember, for our fans watching this, the boat that is on the race course has priority and has the right of way over a boat that is cutting the race course. So Corey had the right of way there. It was going to get close if 
Dustin Eccles wanted to jump in front of him and had the U9 wanted to just run right up on the back of him. Literally, it would have been legal. Dustin made the right move. Well, best way to put it, it's not put this way, but Eccles needed to yield, and he did. And better yet, better be glad he did, because if not, that could have been a disaster right there in the warm-up period. That's what's so unique about H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing, this race before the race. Now, Brad, we have all three boats bunched up at the two-minute 20 second mark there's only one lane one Corey peabody right now has the best shot of getting it yeah if dustin's gonna beat him he's gonna have to drive around him it sure looks that way i thought maybe maybe dustin might hang back and cut the race course but oh and here comes jamie nielsen he's gonna come across i thought it, dustin might do that and Jamie's going to kill as much time as he can. Remember, he's just got to stay above 80 miles an hour, which he's doing. Once he is, once he goes past two buoys, then he establishes right away on the front straightaway. He's going to do that at the start finish line. It's going to be Nielsen in one, Peabody in two, Eccles in three. And they are very close together side by side as they come down the front straightaway. That was tight. That was very, very tight because until they crossed the start finish line, Jamie Nielsen did not have the right of way on that inside lane. Brad, we've mentioned the past two seasons, Jamie Nielsen has a knack at gaining lane number one in H1 Unlimited. Boy, that was expert tactician driving right there. He will be in lane number one. We're coming up on the one minute period. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark, that is the one minute period for Allen Land Surveying, H1, Unlimited, Heat 3B, but my eye, Jamie Nielsen, lane number one, Corey Peabody, lane number two, Dustin Eccles, our top qualifier in lane number three, would love a win, would take a second, Brad Luce, 40 seconds away, bring him down to the green flag for Allen Land Surveying, 3B. Watching one of the drone shots and coming up the backstretch there, sometimes these boats get spread apart quite a ways. They were not. There was only about 10 feet wide between those boats as they went up the backstretch. They've opened it up a little bit now. Inside 25 seconds, now 20 until the start. It's only about 12 off that corner. They might be a little bit early. Coming up on 12 seconds right now. And they are to the exit pin. This should be good. Nielsen in one. Peabody in two. On the outside, it's Echo. We're inside five seconds. We are three, two, one, mark. And there goes Corey Peabody. He gets the jump on the field. He broke the clock from lane number two. Broke the clock, beating the first one across the line. The start is legal. And on the inside, now on the outside, there you see Corey Peabody. Nielsen is there on the inside, back a couple of boat wings. And somewhere on the outside, you can see the rooster tail out there, our top qualifier, Dustin Eccles. But they're running three wide down the back stretch. And once again, Corey Peabody is off to the races, Jeff. Peabody in front, flying up the back straightaway. Dustin Eccles is hitting in the rooster tail. Now we go to the drone shot. Peabody in two. Now Nielsen will tighten it up on the inside. He will go to second. Eccles in third. Peabody in front. Deck to deck dueling for second. Watch out for Dustin. Where is he? There he is. He slides to the outside. Corey Peabody. We're going to go three times around. The start was legal. Peabody. He's got one up and one down with two to go. Then it's Nielsen on the inside. Dustin Eccles. He needs those second place points, Jeff. But he's having to ride a big race course right now because he is on the outside of Corey Peabody. Look at Nielsen. Stay with Corey on the inside. Legend Yacht Transport not going away from that left side mirror on Corey Peabody. The boat driving the hardest right now is Dustin Eccles and bucket list racing. He needs those second place points. We're at the halfway mark of Allen Land Survey and Unlimited 3B. Corey Peabody comfortably in front, but the story in 3B is the second place battle between Jamie Nielsen and Dustin Eccles. Nielsen obviously with the advantage running the shorter way around on the buoy row. Eccles needs to try to pass Nielsen get those 300 points. Peabody in front, Brad, it's side by side, dueling for second. Coming out to put two in the bucks with one to go. Corey Peabody getting a great boat ride, but it is Jamie Nielsen driving the daylights out of that legend yacht transport. He is hanging on to second place.
place. He knows how big this is for Dustin. Dustin knows he's got to get those second place points. He wants to be on the front row of the final. But Jeff, he is driving that big race course, having to be on the outside of Corey Peabody's wash. Peabody's gone. Got a rooster tail and a half. And now look at Nielsen and the Legend Yacht Transport. Got almost a rooster tail on Eccles. Peabody in front. Nielsen now comfortably in second. Eccles tried to get as close to Peabody's rooster tail to cover less real estate. Got a little wet, then had to swing outside. One, two, three, and 3B. Peabody, Nielsen, Eccles, Brad bring them to the checkered flag. Top end of the race course, Corey Peabody. Nobody has solved this puzzle yet this weekend. Checkered flag flies. Corey Peabody, Beacon Plumbing U9 will pick up the win on the water for 400 points. Jamie Nielsen with a great run in Legend Yacht Transport, and it's Dustin Eccles with a solid third place finish. Oh boy, and now the point totals are gonna be fruit salad. It's looking good, Jeff. The boat is running like a rocket. One more, he says. He, he's, <laughs> and when he says that, we know what he's talking about. He's talking about that final heat. Six minutes. in front of the hometown faithful in the U1 Miss Home Street, the powder blue and white, the Home Street blue actually. Dylan Runney in the mix. He's qualified as an H1 Unlimited Hydroplane pilot. Did Approaching that last weekend at Gunnersville. The reins are turned loose and Brad, the legend yacht transport with Jamie Nielsen is in the mix as well. We are five minutes and 30 seconds until the start for H1 Unlimited Heat number one here at the 73rd Madison Regatta. It's the Bob Hughes Memorial presented by U.S. Premier Tube Mills. Brad Luce will try it again. The lids are locked. The fuel Nine, pump is eight, on. The seven, lines are loose. Six, Drivers, five, light four, up the three, Lycomings. Two, one. Jeff Ayler, it's like you're radioing them directly because immediately at the five minute mark, we heard the turbines begin to spool. Time to stand up, one, two, three, four. H1 Unlimited Hydroplanes come away from the dock. The U1, the Miss Home Street is first away. Jamie Nielsen this time is gonna jump out. He was the third boat up the dock, but he's gonna jump to an inside lane. Remember last time Nielsen took off away from the field up the back stretch. He's already got the jump on the field going down to turn one here at the start procedure. And Dustin Eccles this time comes up quickly onto a plane. 420 until the start. Brad, that's important for the drivers in the cockpit. That's part of their strategy in this race before the race. Right now, each driver does not know what lane they're starting in. This is the sequence. This is the race before the race. Usually the first one out is generally right on their timing marks. We'll see how it pans out. Yeah, we're also going to see if anybody wants to cut the race course right now. They can cut the course from back to front on the top end of the GP race course. Our first three boats, which are Jamie Nielsen and the Legend Yacht Transport, the Beacon Electric, and the Miss Home Street have all decided not to do that. We'll see if maybe Dustin Eccles might want to cut the course. He could do so now, but it looks as though he, too, will go up underneath the Milton Madison Bridge. Everybody going up to the top end 
I suspect part of that is go up and see what the water looks like up there. 3.30 until the start. Jamie Nielsen approaching the Madison Ford start finish line buoy in the Chartreuse Royal Blue and Red Legend Yacht Transport. Following Jamie about 1,500 feet back is J. Michael Kelly in the dominant red U8 Beacon Electric. Just underneath the Milton Madison Bridge on the Indiana shoreline, the Home Street Blue and White, Miss Home Street. Dylan running in the cockpit and behind Dylan in the Tennessee Orange. Three minutes until the start. Dustin Eccles drives the bucket list racing. Brad, we're 255 away. Right now, still lots to decide. Which driver right now in that enclosed capsule feels? Are they on their timing marks? Are they not on their timing marks? Do they need to go to plan B or C? And are they in the lane they want to be? An interesting line for Dylan Runney down the front straightaway. He came down the front straightaway on the far outside. Behind him was Dustin Eccles, and now Dustin Eccles has moved to the inside of him. Runney left the door open for him, so he stepped inside of him. But still, to your point, a lot to decide as we come up on 2 minutes and 20 seconds. 2.20, Jeff. Timing marks. When we get to 24 seconds, that's where the field would like to be at the entrance pin of turn number two to our left. Exit pin of turn number two, 17 seconds. If you're at the Milton Madison Bridge on the front, shoot at 12 seconds. Put the hammer to it. That's a good timing run. Two minutes until heat one, H1 unlimited. So far, nobody has decided to cut across the race course. And now it looks like Jamie Nielsen with 150 is going to come down the front straightaway slowly. The other piece to the puzzle here, Jeff, and we've talked about it. You've got yeah, to maintain to at least 80 miles per hour during this entire five-minute period. That will be determined by the officials whether you did or did not when we go through tech inspection. But Jamie Nielsen at a minute 30 is already across start finish line. Kelly comes by. He is in lane two. Nielsen sitting at one. Right now, it is Dustin Eccles in three. And on the outside, it looks like Dylan Runney. 115, Jeff, until our start. By the positioning of the boats, no one elected to cut through the infield. Just past the start finish line, buoy to the back chute. They all go in turn seven, number one. We are six, five, five, four, four three, 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 two, one, mark. mark. One minute mark. period has begun for heat number one of H1 Unlimited at the Bob Hughes Memorial 73rd Madison Regatta presented by U.S. Premier Tube Mills. Brad Lou set these lanes for Heat 1. Legend Yacht Transport, Jamie Nielsen. That is the Chartreuse and Royal Blue boat. He is sitting in lane number one. He's the leader up the backstretch. Lane number two, the bright red boat. That is the Beacon Electric. That is J. Michael Kelly in the U8. Lane number three is going to go to the bright orange U40. That is going to be Dustin Eccles in Bucket List Racing. It's going to be the hometown Miss Madison, Miss Home Street on the far outside. Jeff Ayler inside 23 seconds to the start let's start our 73rd madison regatta by my timing marks everyone looks well behaved nielsen at one kelly and two eccles and three ronnie and four there's 12 seconds they're past the bridge they see the madison ford start finish line we are now three two one mark we're racing in h1 unlimited heat number one here on the ohio river in madison indiana start looked good by my I and the well, was a legal start. Legal start. Heat number one, H1 Unlimited. Your leader in lane number one, Jamie Nielsen, Legend Yacht Transport. Jamie Nielsen had the best start. He led him across start finish line. And right now, he's got a full rooster tail. Jamie Nielsen, Legend Yacht Transport. What a surprise up the backstretch. He's being chased by Dustin Eccles in the U40. Bucket list racing. Then third place on the outside, Dylan Runney in the home street. J. Michael Kelly on an inside lane pulls up the rear. He is in fourth, but still a very tight feed. At the top end of the race course, Jeff Ayler. Remember, we go three times around. This will be the completion of lap number one. Nielsen in front. If he wins this one, it will be at the start. He was there first when the clock struck zero. He's got a comfortable margin. Jamie Nielsen, your leader. Legend Yacht Transport. Dustin Eccles in second. Now J. Michael Kelly and Dylan Runney side by side for third. Nielsen, one complete, two to go in the Legend Yacht Transport. Dustin Eccles in second, bucket list racing. J. Michael Kelly has moved to third in the Beacon Electric. Dylan Runney in fourth and Miss Home Street. 
and Brad Luce, could this be the first upset of the weekend? Nielsen in front, and it's comfortable. Yeah, it is a comfortable lead. He's actually opened up water. Keep an eye on J. Michael Kelly. He has closed a little bit of ground on Dustin Eccles in the bucket list. There's a good race back there for second, but Jamie Nielsen rocking and rolling up the backstretch. He's halfway up there in the U11 Legend Yacht Transport. Got a comfortable rooster tail and a half on Dustin Eccles that he can keep on his right side hip. We are just over halfway through this heat one for H1 Unlimited. There is a good race developing for second place. Keep an eye on J. Michael Kelly in third, but off the top end, still Nielsen, Jeff. Nielsen in front, the one-time Major League Baseball draftee by the Kansas City Royals. He loved boat racing. He's showing superior driving skill in H1 Unlimited heat number one. White flag display, two complete and one to go, and Jamie Nielsen leads it, and it's comfortable. Second place to Dustin Eccles in the bucket list racing. Now Dustin going to the inside wake of your leader, and Kelly is behind him. That battle for second is not over. Running in fourth, Brad, your leader is Nielsen, but look at second. It's going to be tight. Yeah, it might get tight in there for Kelly, and it does because Dustin moved in a little bit. It was going to get tight for Kelly. He got in the rough water. He's still within a half a rooster tail of Dustin Eccles. They're going to come off the lower end of the race court, and now Dustin Eccles starts to open it up on J. Michael Kelly after Kelly got stuck in that rough water down at turn one. But Jamie Nielsen is up to the Milton Madison Bridge. You said it, Jeff. Could we have our first upset of the weekend? This is a doozy if the story holds. Jamie Nielsen is at the top end of the race course. He gets to the exit pin now, and he's just got to come down the front straight away. He will pick up first place for the U11 Legend Yacht Transport. Jamie Nielsen, your fifth fastest qualifier of the five-boat H1 Unlimited. Kelly is field. down. And we got Kelly down, checkered flag waving. Here's your winner yep, of H1 up. Unlimited heat number one. It's Jamie Nielsen in Legend Yacht Transport. Second place will be the bucket list racing. We got a battle for third. Running in the home street. Here comes Kelly on the inside. And J. Michael Kelly will get. Oh, third place. I'm going to give it to Kelly by about 14 feet over Dylan running in the Miss Home Street. That's unofficial because we're a little bit sideways at the German American Bank judges stand looking at the Madison Ford start finish line. Jamie Nielsen, your unofficial winner of heat number one. He won it right at the start, the best start. Lane number one, shorter way around, textbook driving. Absolutely. Jamie Nielsen was just superb in that heat. My apologies to our fans as J. Michael Kelly is going dead in the water down in the lower corner. My apologies, Jeff, at the top end of the race course. Kelly really got in some soup up there, and the boat really so slowed down. That's why all of a sudden you had the home street right alongside him. But a great run for Kelly to pick up third when they came home. But the story of this one. It is chartreuse and royal blue with a bunch of red trim. Jamie Nielsen in the Legend Yacht Transport. They are going to be extremely happy. I'm looking to our left. Scott Rainey is to our left. He's standing there with Jean Fioret. And they are both, Jean Fioret is here as a guest of the U11 Legend Yacht Transport. They've got to be very, very happy. I can guarantee you that Scott Rainey will take this in stride, just another step in the right direction. Brad, we had two veterans in the heat. Nielsen and Kelly were the veterans. They were in lanes one and two. The two other drivers, Dustin Eccles, he's still relatively new to the unlimited class, and of course, Dylan running his second race. But Jamie Nielsen, that veteran savviness, he was right there at zero at the start, that one H1 Unlimited Heat one, unofficial. Beautiful start, beautiful driving. That goes to show how tight this field is here in Madison for the Madison Regatta. Good.
already strapped in. We're six minutes and 35 seconds away until H1 Unlimited Heat 2 at the 2023 Madison Regatta, the 73rd running of the Madison Regatta in the modern era. First boat race in Madison, Brad Luce, took place in 1911, coincidentally the same year as the first Indiana State Boys Basketball Tournament. It was a field of eight, and a pretty important event took place in 1911 in Indianapolis. The Indy 500 won by Ray Haroon, who rode in his car by himself, come up with the object, the rear vision mirror. How about that? Saved on weight. Ray Haroon won the first Indy 500 with that object, the rear vision mirror. Rear vision mirror. I've got a couple of those in my car. All right, Jeff, we are inside one to the five. Our fans here along the shoreline can look down along the dock. If you can see a boat and not blocked by a view there, you'll see that the lids are going down. I know for a fact it's down on the 40 because we're watching some of that up here. In fact, the lids are down on all of them. And now the noses are starting to stick out toward the center of the river. And we are going to have boats out on the water, Jeff Ayler, in about 15 seconds. Thank you, Brad Luz. The noses of the boats pointed away from the pit dock. Ten seconds until the five-minute period. Race fans, we are now five, four, three, two, one. Mark, five-minute period is in session for H1 Unlimited Heat number two. Drivers. Hit the trigger finger, light up the Lycoming. And they're doing exactly that. Jeff Ayler, first away from the drop was J. Michael Kelly. He's the third boat from the right. He's headed out toward the center of the race course. He will turn to the right and head down to the lower corner. He's going to see off to his right that Dylan Runney is already up and gone. And he is on the outside going down the front straightaway between boats. It is our top qualifier, Corey Peabody. He will be the third boat to go down to the lower end. One, two, three down at the lower end and away from the dock as he has been the last two times. And I say two times because they had the one heat that didn't start. Trailing the field away from the pit area, Dustin Eccles in that bright orange U40. For our guests, race fans along the shoreline here in Madison, two and one half mile course. It will be a three lap heat. Here in heat number two with H1 Unlimited, right now this is what we call the milling period. Each driver does not know which lane they will start at. This is that race before the race. This is where your timing marks come into importance in qualifying and in testing. Right now, who has the best strategy? Only one of those four drivers know. We don't know. They know. They know, and they're going to try and execute to a plan. The problem is if somebody else is going to try and execute to the same plan. That's what we're about to find out. Everybody went down to the lower corner and went all the way up to the top end of the race course underneath the Milton Madison Bridge. J. Michael Kelly is going to bring him down the front straightaway at 320. 320 before our start. Again, our boats cannot drop below 80 miles an hour. That is an aspect that will be found and determined during tech inspection. There are indicators aboard the boats, so they get an indication that they start getting close to 80 miles an hour, they will know it. But we won't find out until after the heat is over. Side by side, Corey Peabody comes by with Dylan Runney, and then coming up behind the field, bright orange, Dustin Eccles, two minutes and 50 seconds, Jeff. So the three of Kelly, Peabody, and Runny will go down to turn number one. Dustin Eccles will elect to join them. He could have cut through the infield right there, but we'll go to turn number one. We're coming up on two minutes and 35 seconds until H1 Unlimited heat number two. The drone shot from H1 Unlimited. Now we go to the pan shot. Kelly leads him up the back chute, followed by Peabody and Runny. Eccles trailing back. Brad, prior to the start, you have to have your lane established prior to the entrance pin of turn number two. And right now, there is still lots to decide. Yeah, there's still lots to decide. I like where they are in the race course as we approach two minutes. J. Michael Kelly is right now sitting in lane number one, but that could change. Now, look at Dustin Eccles. He starts to give it a squirt, and he's going to pull up to the rest of the field. And you made a great point, Jeff. Not this time at the top end of the race course, but the next time they go to the top end of the race course, whatever lane they are in, when they get to the entrance pin to turn two, that's the lane they have to hold to the start-finish line. Then standard overlap rules apply. Jeff, 
135 coming down the front straightaway. Thank you, Brad. Right now, the sequence would be Kelly, Peabody, Ronnie, and Eccles. I think Madison fans would love to see the home street blue and white more toward the buoy row. But right now, everyone seems well behaved. But once again, have to have that lane established prior to the entrance pin of turn number two. Will we see the leapfrog activity? Beautiful shot up above turn number one from our H1 Unlimited video team. We're coming down to one minute. Five four three two one mark one minute period is in session for h1 unlimited heat number two brad lou set these lanes take them up to the milton madison bridge i think we're going to see a quicker start if it's possible than we saw in that first heat but on lane number one it's the beacon electric and j michael kelly lane number two is the beacon plumbing with Corey peabody lane number three is the powder blue the home street and on the far outside is dustin eccles in the u40 the bucket list racing coming up on 35 seconds i liked where they were coming off the lower corner at about a minute six. Jeff, they're at the top end of the race course inside 30 seconds. It's heat two of H1 Unlimited. Get them going. Thank you, Brad Luce. I like the alignment. This start may be just a touch early. Feather that throttle. We're at 17 seconds. They're at the bridge. They're at 12. Put the hammer down. H1 Unlimited heat number two. We are now five, four, three, two, one mark we're racing we'll call it physically dustin eccles led him across the line in lane number four in the bucket list racing up above with the drone in turn number one eccles there first but we look to the inside Corey peabody your leader in the beacon plumbing j michael kelly second Ronnie third eccles fourth it is strong racing running one two coming off the corner in lane number two it is Corey peabody in the beacon plumbing and he's got his teammate j michael kelly sitting in that left side rear view mirror on the inside lane but jeff you don't see the other boats because they are right there with him and look on the outside you have got dustin eccles making a move on the outside very tight at the top end of the race course jeff anybody's race here the start was good for Tana Morissette with H1 Unlimited. Corey Peabody had the lane. He's in lane number two, leads it. J. Michael Kelly back in second. But we got a battle for third between Dylan Runney and Dustin Eccles. We'll come down to complete lap number one of three. It's Corey Peabody now comfortably in front. Kelly in second. Officially after lap one, Eccles in third officially. Runny in fourth. Peabody comfortably in front. Kelly in second, the advantage to the buoy row. Eccles now in third, make it six boat lengths. Brad loose off the turn, Peabody comfortably in front, but still some deciding to do for second, third, and fourth. Yeah, that race for third and fourth is a barn burner right there. It is. It is Dylan Runny right now with about a three or four boat length lead over Dustin Eccles on the outside. You can see the orange boat. All you see is the rooster tail. And look at Dylan Runny. He's got his sights set on J. Michael Kelly. This is still a very, very close boat race as we go underneath the Milton Madison Bridge. This lap number two of three. Top end of the race course. Corey Peabody's got his teammate off to his left. That's J. Michael Kelly. But he's also got mirrors on the right side with full of boats. Peabody swung out. Corey Peabody. Peabody has found some extra voltage, or J. Michael Kelly, excuse me, he's still in the mix. White flag displayed, two complete, one more to go. Corey Peabody, your leader in the Beacon Plumbing, now making a seven boat length advantage over J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. Dylan Rennie, third in Miss Home Street. Dustin Eccles, fourth in Bucket List Racing. Back into turn number one here on the Wild Bill Cantrell Memorial Race Course. Peabody, your leader. Kelly still in second. Boy, it's rough off the turn. Yeah, it's real rough coming off that corner, but they all got through it clean, and now our boats are starting to spread out a little bit. It is Corey Peabody in the Beacon Plumbing. He's out by a full rooster tail over his teammate, J. Michael Kelly, in the Beacon Electric. But in the right side, rear view mirror, J. Michael Kelly's got a lot of home street blue. He's going to have to drive a big race course because he's going to have to go wider than Corey Peabody is driving. That's going to be a real handicap. See how they come off the corner and how much room JMK has on the inside. And he's got a lot of it, Jeff. Bring him down. The checkered flag flies. Your top qualifier, your leader underneath the Milton Madison Bridge, Corey Peabody Ein, the Madison Ford start finish line, buoy, checkered flag waving. Here's your winner of heat number two in H1 Unlimited, Corey Peabody in the Beacon Plumbing. J. Michael Kelly will get second. 
in the Beacon Electric. Dylan Runney made a charge on the back chute on the last lap, but will settle for third in the Miss Home Street. And Dustin Eccles had the best start of all in the bucket list racing. But Brad, when you're in lane number four, and no pun intended, that's handicapped territory, yeah, covering it, too much territory. We know the inside lane here on this particular race course can be really tough, but that doesn't mean they get better the further you go out. The sweet spot is somewhere in the middle, and you're right. Uh, Dustin Eccles had his hands full. He had a great start. He had a lot of boat speed. He was right in the mix for a bit, and I think uh, when they came off the lower corner there at the beginning of lap number three, I think his radio people probably made commentary to him, let him go. They're starting to move away, and the water was getting pretty soupy, but boy, strong racing, and you say no pun intended, they look pretty strong. Corey looked really strong. Corey Peabody coming back to the pit dock. Tate Meyer with H1 Unlimited with the camera on the Beacon Plumbing. So your top qualifier here at Madison picked up the victory at last weekend's Southern Cup in Guntersville, Alabama. And Brad, this team is still undefeated in 23. Yeah, I made the comment in Guntersville last weekend. You know, Jeff, when we left, nobody had solved the Corey Peabody puzzle. They still haven't. That boat is really something special, or so it is proving to be in the early part of our 2023 season. All our boats are coming back to the dock. Want to remind our fans again, the results on the water, the results on the water are what they are, but they are not official until such time as our boats go through tech inspection. And that will happen as quickly as possible. Both strong boats are back to the dock. The engine has been shut off aboard the bucket list racing U40 and the home street is drifting into the dock. So second time for start for finish. Good racing, Jeff. That was a good one. They were tight going up that backstretch.
to the Milton Madison Bridge set these lanes. The boat that is out in front is the Chartreuse Royal Blue and Red. That is the U11 Legend Yacht Transport with Jamie Nielsen. Next to him in lane number two is the white U9 Beacon Plumbing with Corey Peabody. J. Michael Kelly is driving the Beacon Electric, the U8. He is in lane number three. And on the outside, it's going to be the bright orange bucket list racing with Dustin Eccles behind the wheel. They are heading into the top end of the race course. They seem to be in good position. We're inside 25 seconds to the start. Jeff Ayler, start our Sunday race program. Off the turn, this should be a super good start. They're approaching the Milton Madison Bridge. They are at the 12 second mark. 11, it's the damn 10, family. H1 Unlimited, eight, heat number three. Seven, and here's Nielsen six, once again five, trying the strategy four, he did yesterday. Three, He's coming to the line. Two, we'll one, call it mark. physically as we're racing in the damn family. H1 Unlimited Heat 3 here at the Madison Regatta. Nielsen was there first. Start is under review. Nielsen might have been over. He would be the only one, I think, by my eye. Oh, oh Peabody is hooked. Peabody in the infield. He is hooked. And now Nielsen takes the lead. If Nielsen jumped, Kelly could vault to first. And Peabody trying to refire the beacon plumbing. Yeah, he got pushed out a little bit wide. He started to slide out close to J. Michael Kelly in the corner down there. He tried to bring the boat back into some open water. He had a lane in there, but then the boat hooked on him. Now Kelly, top end of the race course, has taken the lead away from Jamie Nielsen. In fact, he's got about three boat lengths, Jeff. Two leaders out front, Kelly Nielsen off the corner. We got official word from H1 Unlimited, the Legend Yacht Transport issued a one lap penalty for a gun jump, your leader. The dominant red beacon plumbing with J. Michael Kelly and Corey Peabody is dead in the water. In turn number one, he appears to be in the racing lane. We will watch the drone from H1 Unlimited. Peabody is out in lane number three. The advantage, and now Kelly will have to go around his teammate. So Kelly sees his teammate, goes around him. You see there on our camera angle. The Legend Yacht Transport a one lap penalty, but Brad with that, Eccles running physically in third, just saw Peabody is actually in second, the Orange Craft. Yeah, the Orange Craft is now, Bucket List Racing is running in second place. J. Michael Kelly went the long way around his teammate down there in the lower corner, but it's not gonna cost him. He's got two, two and a half rooster tails over Jamie Nielsen, but remember, Nielsen in the Legend Yacht Transport has a one lap penalty. So he's a lap down your second place boat, Dustin Eccles, and this is big for them, Jeff, they need these 300 points. This is really going to help Bucket List Racing and Dustin Eccles if he can bring it home. The damn family, heat number three in H1 Unlimited Dramatics in the race before the race and in the racing activity. That should have been the white flag where we'll get clarification. No white flag given to the eight, but I believe that is your lead boat. One lap penalty on the Legend Yacht Transport for a gun jump. Now we get the white flag for the bucket list racing with Dustin Eccles. We'll call it physically like we know right now. Your red boat out in front, Beacon Electric, the Tennessee Orange in second, bucket list racing, Legend Yacht Transport in third, Peabody still dead in the water. All J. Michael Kelly up the back stretch now. All he has to do is negotiate one half lap, go underneath the bridge, bring it back down under the bridge, and he will pick up a first place finish in our heat number three, presented by the damn family. We are on the final lap for our leaders. Our second place boat is just now coming off the bottom end of the race course. That is Dustin Eccles. But bring our leader down, although the white flag is flying. We're watching the flags here at the German American Bank judges stand. White flag being delivered to the U8 Beacon of Light. Now the checkered flag comes out. Your winner of the damn family, H1 Unlimited Heat 3 unofficially is the Beacon Plumbing with J. Michael Kelly. White flag will be displayed to Jamie Nielsen in the Legend Yacht Transport for the gun jump. He'll go one more time around. Brad, let's watch the flags for Dustin Eccles. Now we're getting a white flag for the bucket list racing. Dustin Eccles obviously issued possible one lap penalty for that incident prior to the start. That is unofficial. It is precautionary. They're okay. having our two lead boats take an extra lap. So they were the winners on the water by now. It is a precautionary extra lap because of some of that 
activity that was going on before the start. The boats got very close. The officials will review and we'll get it. J. Michael Kelly, the winner on the water, but they're having him run one more lap. He will come down, get a checkered flag a second time, as will Dustin Eccles. And this time we should get the first checkered flag for Jamie Nielsen in the legend yacht transport. So I ride him down in Penso that I learned from my friend Scott Davidson when we work basketball games at WRX. Your unofficial winner of the damn family, heat number three is J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. Brad, right now, it appears that Jamie Nielsen will get the checkered flag in the Legend Yacht Transport. The running order for several moments during that heat, I had the 8, 40, and 11 in that order, but there's a possibility after this heat, after review, some things could change. So right now, just write them down in pencil. I've got the 8 in front, the 40 in second, the 11 in third. Yeah, I think you're right. And if we look down there to the lower end of the race course, I think we'll see Jamie Nielsen going very slowly. That's because from my perspective, he was way out in front of all of the activity that was going on during the race before the race in the milling period. I don't think he was involved in it. Our other two boats were. There was a precautionary lap that was run. But I think you're right. We've got the U8, the Beacon Electric, the in first place, at least on the water ending any call that might be made second place to the U40 and Dustin Eccles, third place to the U11 Legend Yacht Transport. Got a little hectic there. It's, well, it's race day, Jeff. Well, I'm sorry, my friend. We got a little bit out of cadence there on the sequence, but uh, we wanted to try to do our best to get those positions for you. And of course, we were watching the flags here in the damn family, heat number three with H1 Unlimited. Brad Luce will go over and monitor some of the activity with our officials, but right now everything is unofficial, not only with the racing activity, not only with the race before the race, and now these boats have to go through tech inspection with H1 Unlimited, the damn family, heat number three is in a little bit disarray, just stand by. When we get official results from the officials, we'll pass it along to you, but unofficially.